Hi there, this is Two Wheels Big Life. In our last episode, you guys know that we hightailed it out of Texas and went to New Mexico and are in a holding pattern until all of the mess clears up and we can all get out on the road and go back to enjoying life again. In this episode, we wanted to take you guys and kind of circle back around to the past and let you know how and why we got to where we are today, which is trying to live off our motorcycles as best we can. So that's what we're going to accomplish in this episode. I mean, we were responsible adults. <laughs> we tried to be. We tried to be. You know, we had, we had the house, the 2.5 kids. Sorry, right? Max. And living the American dream. She worked as an accountant at a nonprofit. I worked at a manufacturer, so. Used to be over by the window and I could see the squirrels and they were married, but then they switched. See? So I think what happened for us is we got to the point where the house was just too big. It was too time consuming. It was too much work to upkeep. And then the kids started leaving and then it got really empty. Bye. <laughs> this is what happens when they move out of the house. <laughs> We waved goodbye to the kids and our days started looking like this. Here's what's become our new best friend of the year, Flock. Put this stuff in, scrape the sides, wait a day, all the dirt goes in the ground. Actually, all the dirt goes to the bottom of the pool. And then you can vacuum it up. And we are experts at flocking. That's we are flock experts. It's because it's a flocking pool. <laughs> Literally, it's full of flock. Okay, I think we've exhausted the flocking jokes. Actually, he's replacing the wheel on the wheelbarrow. I think we got one that was, got, has no air, needs no air. Yeah, needs something. no air. All right, you ready? And then we said, well, what do we want to do next? and we didn't really know. And we didn't know what we wanted to do. We didn't know if we wanted to sell the house or rent it, rent it out, so we had something to come back to. We, we thought maybe we wanted to buy some land, build a barndonium right. or, or a tiny house. And then or we, get an RV. Exactly, but, but then... What kind of RV? <laughs> yes. Right, what kind of RV are we gonna do? Or is it gonna be a class A, a, a fifth wheel? A C? A C class? The whole what? alphabet. So yeah, something we wanted to do to bring the motorcycles. We knew for sure we need to have the motorcycles with us. We watched Mark and Trisha's video from Keep Your Daydream, where basically they talk about if you have a dream, just go out and do it with what you have. Mm -hmm. That starting small now is better than starting big later yes. or never. Yes, well that's exactly the scary part is if you don't start with what you already have and what you can do right yeah. this minute, you may never start at all because someday never comes as people say. And because of the encouragement that we got from watching Mark and Trisha's video, we said, hey, what do we have in the garage? Yeah, so we looked in the garage and we saw we had two motorcycles that were paid for. Yeah. We also had a trailer. Yeah. We've done it before we just got back from a 5500 mile trip last year or in last summer and thought this is it yeah. let's let's use those let's take, and hit the road let's take the summer off let's go out there let's go meet a bunch of fantastic people let's see how other people are doing it and let's maybe in 6 months hopefully we'll figure out what we want to do what is the worst that can happen on going on an adventure you end it and then you walk right back into life yeah, <laughs> you just step and, that, back and that's the worst. Yeah, that's the worst case. Then yeah. the best case is is you keep doing it, but either way, you're going to have memories. Yes, and those memories are what's going to yes. keep you going for the next one. Yeah. So we thought this was a great idea until we told our family. <laughs> so everyone thinks we're not going to make it, yeah. but this just let, tells you that whatever your dream is. 
It is your dream, not anybody else's. No one's. When you're doing it, you're going to have the highs and lows yes. of, you're going to have highs of, of what an awesome idea and the lows of, man, we're nuts. What are we thinking? Yeah. And then there's <laughs> the, the, the crazy part of, of thinking, how are we going to do this? And just know that that's just part of the journey. That's yeah. just, it's all part of the journey and everything in between is all part of that adventure that, of what you want to do. Now we want to cover the how, which is downsizing. Whether you're downsizing from a large house to a smaller house or an apartment or a condo or an RV or motorcycles, motorcycles. it still takes a lot of planning. So the first thing that we decided we needed to do, we made the decision to sell our house and we interviewed a couple realtors. We settled on Courtney Benson, Courtney Benson Property Group. Yes, fantastic realtor. Yep, shout out to her again. She's, she was very instrumental in helping us get through the whole process. Yes. With her advice, we stepped back from our house as occupants and we viewed our house as potential buyers. Right. And we walked around the house looking for everything that needed to be fixed, spruced up, repaired, or whatever. And we sat down and we made a very extensive list. Looking at our calendar. Yep, that's what we're doing. Map out how much time we have left before we hit the road, or actually how much time we have left before we list the house. Yes. And everything that needs to happen between now and then. I just got home from work and the floors are, no, the floors are going out is what's happening. They're beating the tile to death and breaking it into little bitty pieces and they've done this to the whole entire, entire house. What are we doing again? No, what are we doing still? Painting! <laughs> what do you do with a 2,500 square foot house but paint every single wall, all piece of the trim, every single door, front, back, bottom, side. Dear Lord, I'm so sick of painting. <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're pretty much done with painting. There. Like this. You got a whole way to hold your oh. paintbrush up here. Oh. Get them both in here. <laughs> yes. Okay, major project number 101. Repairing. 101 major projects? 101 major projects. Repairing or replacing the fence slats. So, still, still on our journey to get the house fixed up and on the market. Here we go. I'm using Chris's hammer. <laughs> it could just get a smaller hammer for a fence. <laughs> that was you. I said, go grab me a claw hammer. <laughs> you got to give her credit. She knows what a claw hammer is. <laughs> fence completed. Okay, what you doing? I'm checking one of our lists off, one of our things off our list. What did we get done? We got number four of the major projects outside fence done done <laughs> yay just 45 more things yep then there's also the other stuff that you don't really realize that need to be done for a move and for an adventure of wherever you're going if you're on the road or yes. what we have well we quit our job so we didn't have health insurance on health care my suggestion is that you find a reputable licensed insurance agent shout out to Paul Terrell for, with Terrell insurance services that we use we'll put a link down below if you have any interest in checking him out I highly highly recommend him um, there are four options that we looked at. I'm sure there's more, but there's the, the four that we looked at. The first one was the Affordable Care Act, and that is based on your income for the calendar year that you're in. So I'm going to use this as an example for 2020. They want to know how much at the end of the year you're going to have made. So say if you tell them I'm going to make $25,000 at the end of the year, you file your taxes and you actually made $50,000, they're, they base that, your monthly premium, off of the 25000 so they're going to come back and say, well, you owe more. The second option that we looked into was the health care sharing plans. 
The, and in those, we looked at, there's four of them. There's MediShare, Liberty, Healthcare, Samaritan's Ministry, and Christian Healthcare. Um, those are faith-based organizations. There's pros and there's cons to using those. Uh, a pro would be that their premiums, their monthly premiums are usually lower. The con is that these are not insurances. So if they deny a claim, you have no legal recourse anywhere to get that claim reversed. The third option that we looked into was a nationwide Cigna PPO plan. And that plan is great if you're young and you're healthy. Not so great if you're older and you've got some pre-existing conditions that kind of come along with you because they absolutely will not cover that. It was also a very, very high monthly premium. We liked it because it was nationwide, um, but we just couldn't afford it. And they probably would have denied everything that we submitted. So it didn't work for us. But again, do your due diligence and maybe something like that will work out for you. The fourth option that we looked at was called an indemnity nationwide PPO plan. Basically, they provide a million dollars of coverage and they pay a fixed rate for all services. So if you're in the hospital, they'll pay X amount per day for this day. If you have an X-ray, they pay X amount for the X-ray. It's, it, it's all set and then you pay the difference. Um, again, it was pretty high. They had three different plans, but it was still pretty high for us. And so we chose to go with the Affordable Care Act. That's our options on health insurance. And let me know if you want any more information because I have a whole lot of it. We really did uh, spend hours and hours on trying to figure out what was the best option for us. On to mail forwarding service. There's a lot of options out there. We narrowed it down to three. The first one that we looked at was called Traveling Mailbox. It was for $15 a month, and we really liked all of their options. It was for 40 pieces of mail, and they have scanning services and everything. So we were all on board. We get ready to sign up, and through the sign up process, they have this little thing at the end that says that the county that we wanted to pick was a premium county and so it would be additional four dollars and 99 cents so instead of 15 dollars a month it was going to be over 20 dollars a month which we thought was a little bit too expensive actually it was very expensive and so we did some more looking into their website and actually all of their addresses except for one were all premium addresses that they would tack on the four dollars and 99 cents so eh, that one went out the window second option that we looked at was the escapees mail service and again that was another one that we were all on board and we were going to go with it great service it was ten dollars a month so it was reasonably priced and um, they very much cater to the RV or traveling individual community so they have a lot of other things out there that you connect can connect yourself with the caveat with that one is that you have to go to Livingston, Texas in person to sign up for it, to fill out the form in person. I think it was the 1583 postal form. And we were in the middle of a pandemic, so there was no traveling anywhere. So that one kind of had to go too. We finally settled on our third option was iPostal One. And that was $9.99 a month, 30 pieces of mail. There was a post office or a mail office in the county that we wanted. We even went in and visited with them and it was perfect. So that's what we went to. And I hope that gives you a little bit more information for you to go do your due diligence on a mail forwarding service because it's crazy out there. The next thing is, is when you're downsizing a house, there are some things that you're gonna keep. Yes. You will keep some records, some some scrapbook stuff, a set of chairs and a table that you liked or whatnot. So you got to find a storage facility and what size storage facility will you need? So we got a storage unit. Yep. Here we are. Yeah. 10 by 7. Okay. Yes. And we try, we're trying to get as small as possible. We thought we could get away with a five by five, but that was way too tiny. We, for, were, we were smoking crack yeah. or something. Even we though were. we have so gotten rid of so much stuff, we still need a bigger one. But here's what we wanted to share with you that we've never rented a storage facility before, so we didn't have any idea. So we shopped around online and we picked the one that had some really good rates mm -hmm. and, the, and the 
um, unit was inside a building rather than being yeah. outside. Not, so, not temperature controlled, but in a building, so it's not going to be 9,000 yes. degrees. But here's what we didn't know is they require you to have like renter's insurance on top of your monthly. And they wanted to charge us an extra $12 on top of our monthly fee. So I whipped out my phone and I checked out Snap Insure. S is snap, is snap, the letter N S U R E. Yes. Snap Insure. And that was $6 a month. And you have to. For $2,000 coverage, $100 deductible. Yeah. And you have to provide the storage unit with a declaration page page uh, that shows that you've got this insurance. So maybe there's some storage units out there that don't require this. Yeah. That's something we did not know about and did not research. So we hope that you guys do yeah, a little bit more research, research than we did. So now the house goes up for sale. So now we're thinking of the stuff that we need to take with us. I talked to my doctor and my doctor says, look, with all the stuff that's going around, you need to really keep your immune system up. So what are we doing? We're dumpster diving. We're, we are dumpster diving because in my haste to downsize and get us out on the road and everything that we have to do, I went through all of our vitamins and I was like, hey, hey here's, look at that. here's vitamin C. I don't, we haven't used it in a long time. I don't know, we'll never use it. I'm gonna throw it away. Well, getting on the phone with the doctor this morning, especially for Richard, uh, he, he recommended that Richard take vitamin C, so. Well, he's like, build your immune system up. So, That's the thing. so I ran to the store to get vitamin C, thinking that the one that I threw away was expired. And lo and behold, there's no vitamin C in the store. So now we're dumpster diving to find the vitamin C I threw away yesterday to see if it has been expired or not. Or if I just was in my haste to get rid of everything, I got rid of the wrong everything. Yes. It's not in there? No. Ooh. You. Gold, we found it. We needed to create a budget. Oh, yeah. Right? Yes, you want to control your burn rate. Right. Because if you're spending all your money in the first month, then your trip is kind of short. <laughs> we didn't right. want that. And she's an accountant, so she's really good at budgeting and getting gauging the burn rate. Yes, so we created a budget. We're going to share that with you guys too, as well, in a future video. To Because you, when you think there's, there's, you go out on a trip for a week or two weeks or even a month, and you've got those, basically those five expenses of gas, food, lodging, entertainment, mm -hmm. and, and that. But when you're living full time, you have to think of everything. If you have any subscriptions, if you have any prescriptions, um, uh, your health care payment, everything should be part of your budget at the time that you're living full time on the road. Right. Insurance on vehicles, on yeah. bikes. and One thing we had to consider is we had pets. And unfortunately, we had a dog. We had a dog that was old. 15 he was years. 15 years and he was... In this process we had to put him down. Not yeah. because of this process yeah. but because it was Let's time. Let's be clear. Yeah. It wasn't because no. we were doing this we put the dog down. That did not happen. He was 15 years old and his hips were out and he was struggling to get around. Yeah. So we probably waited a, we'd waited too long to put yeah. him down because we, you love your pet. I mean you love him. He was, it was hard. Yeah he was a great family member. Yes and then we had two cats one of the cats is our son, and so he went with him, and the other cat was ours, and so we had to take, figure out a place to put her for six months, so we drove up to Arkansas. Oh, to Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Thanks, yeah. Mom. That, and she's at Grandma's house, and that was a very interesting travel trip that we took, <laughs> getting her there. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Hi. Did she? Honey. What? I smell poop. Well, just find it. I maybe. can't find it. Well, I need to well, find well, let's it. I'm filming. I'm not well, going to go find well, it. Well, I know, but if we find it, then we'll need to pull over and get rid of it. That's what I'm saying. In case you're wondering, it is. It's time now. It's time to take socks to Grandma's house. To Grandma's house. To stay. And she's not loving it. She's okay. She's she's okay. We, we went to the vet yesterday. We got a little sedative to give her. And she should. <laughs> Sorry. I just smell it. I just smell it. It's really bad. <laughs> it, it is. Okay. It is. Okay, we're going to go now because... <laughs> yeah. When the, we started this out as, uh, let's, let's, let's put this in here, and then the, the cat decided to shit in the car. <laughs> and I wanted to go back real quick. We had two specific 
things, actually three specific things that we did with our donations. For some reason, throughout our years of wearing glasses, we kept every pair of glasses we've ever owned. So I made sure that those got taken back to the optometrist and put in their donation box so that the, we, they can recycle all of those lenses They'll re for recycle people. Recycle the, the frames or lenses, the frames mainly too. Yeah, the frames. And give them to people that need it. Yeah. It was a Lions Club, I believe, yeah. donation. And the same with the dog food. When we had to put our dog down, we had dog food left. And so went over to the Humane Society in Denton and donated that. Um, we didn't sell our furniture. Right. We had a friend of ours who knew a family in need that needed furniture. And so it worked out very well. They came over to our house with a truck and a trailer. And we shoveled that, everything on there. Loaded it up and he took it back over to them. and. Yes. They, it's, it's just good to know that the, that it's not just going to get trashed in the dump. It's, you know, somebody's using it and yes. it's good. I like that. Yes. We did have to make a dump run. So we're not going on, we're not going to go on motorcycles. Look, we're just going to camp like this. We got yeah. our bed. Our bed. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs motorcycles and tent and, and cots when we have a trailer? Like a double queen. <laughs> Check that out. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so is this glamping or what, Travis? <laughs> oh yeah. Route planning. Where are you gonna go? That's another thing. In the midst of everything that you're trying to do, you're trying to fix your house, you're trying to downsize, you're trying to buy all the gear that you need. You also fig need to figure, take a few minutes and figure out where are you gonna go. Well, and for what us, does it look like? and what does it look like? So I spent a lot of time doing a lot of research of, hey, when we sell the house and we head out, we're going we're gonna to head south and we're going to eventually make our way down to Big Bend and explore that area in the spring. And then, no, <laughs> that didn't no, work. No, <laughs> the Rona was here. Yeah. So that's gone. So that's out the window. We'd originally planned to go up into Canada also, but no. Yeah, but you do need to figure out where you're going to go right. and what you're going to do once you head out on your great adventure. And that, that also requires time. So just to recap, we needed to fix everything around the house. We needed to downsize everything around the house. We needed to go through all of our gear and, and either purchase um, anything else that we needed to live off on, on the road. So that wraps it up. Now you know why we're, we got to where we are, yep. how, how we got to where we are. We ask that you guys stay tuned because our next video, we're gonna go over all of our gear of what we packed and the extra I was able to shove in. <laughs> and if you had <laughs> if you had watched our prequel, or if you haven't, Richard will link it over here. Go watch it because it'll tell you how much weight his motorcycle was carrying, lugging all this stuff from Texas to New Mexico. Yeah, Richard, that's that's in there. So, I was kind of I was kind of amazed. So this is a to be continued. I hope you guys stay tuned. So subscribe, like, ring the bell, make a comment. We'd love to get to know you guys. Yes. We can hardly wait till we can get out on the road and we want to meet you guys. And we're really, really excited about all the future. It God is. bless. Yep. Keep the shiny side up.